necrotizing enterocolitis necrotizing enterocolitis is basically the inflammation of the gut leading to the necrosis and hence the further complications etiopathogenesis of the risk factors prematurity most important risk factor lack of breastfeeding and or or animal based diet heart disease or shock prematurity is the most important risk factor because a premature gut is the gut in which the mucosa isn't developed well the mucosa is still growing and hence incapable of fighting against any foreign stresses therefore the prematurity is the most common factor coming to the next that is the enteral nutrition most commonly the babies are fed in only the breast milk in order to prevent any type of infection this is because the breast contain certain substances which promote good bacterial growth in the gut which prevent harmful bacteria that can invade and cause neonatal or child disease and hence breastfeeding is promoted in the first 6 months so that not only the nutrition can be received by the baby but also the gut of the baby is protected now coming to the animal based diet the animal based diet is not given during the early childhood as it can precipitate the necrotizing enterocolitis as the animal based diet contains lots and lots of substances which the child is unable to digest and also this diet may contain bacterial substances which can lead to over stress on the gut and hence leading to necrosis this completes the enteral nutrition now let's see the ischemic component the ischemia can be due to heart disease or any other problem leading to scarcity of the blood to the gut mucosa this scarcity causes lack of nutrition to gut mucosa which is still growing in an immature child moreover due to scanty blood supply the gut mucosa now cannot regenerate and hence the bacterial infection or any other cause which leads to damage to the gut mucosa cannot be healed these all three components prematurity ischemia and enteral nutrition funnel down to cause necrotizing enterocolitis now let's see this diagram this diagram is of gut in which you can see mucosa lining the gut which is thinned out because of the prematurity of the gut and also you can see the bacteria growing in the gut along with scanty blood supply these all factors promotes the inflammation in the gut leading to the necrosis of the mucosa and further spread of the disease now let's go further to the bell's classification of necrotizing enterocolitis as you can see in this big classification of necrotizing enterocolitis there are basically three stages or the three classes in which the necrotizing enterocolitis is divided each class is subdivided into two 1a 1b and so on this table seems very lengthy and full of information seems difficult to be learned but believe me i will make you understand in very easy terms with the help of diagrams coming in the video so let's begin the first class is basically suspect in this the diagnosis of the disease is difficult because it is in its mildest form 1a as you can see in this stage there is occult blood sign seen which is hidden blood in the stools hence this blood cannot be seen by naked eyes moreover along with general signs there is no peculiar sign which can help in detecting the disease here so an occult blood test is ordered which detects the disease in its earliest stage as the stage seems silent so is the radiological sign therefore there is no radiological sign seen as such now coming to stage 1b in stage 1b all the features of stage 1a along with frank blood appears also termed as hematochezia now as above there is no radiological scene in this part also 
Now let's go further. Now coming to class 2 which is definitive. Why it is called definitive? Because the signs and symptoms here pinpointly indicates the disease and hence help the clinician in definitive diagnosis. Let's go on. Stage 2A. Stage 2A contains all the features of stage 1B along with no bowel sounds and also intestinal dilatation. This intestinal dilatation is due to accumulation of the gas in the intestine which is due to proliferation of the bacteria in the gut. If an x-ray is ordered, we see the gas in the gut as pneumonitis intestinalis which is the hallmark of this disease, necrotizing enterocolitis. Let's go further. Stage 2b. Stage 2b also contains all the features of stage 2a along with cellulitis or the bowel inflammation and also abdominal tenderness and the accumulation of fluid in the peritoneum that is ascites. All these signs are the signs of inflammation indicating disease started in the lumen but now is progressed and has involved the gut mucosa. Now the gut mucosa is inflamed and hence the signs of abdominal tenderness, ascites and cellulitis can be seen. Along with this sign, if we do radiology, we will find gas in the portal vein. Now going on to the next, class 3, which is advanced. As name indicates, now the disease has progressed into advanced stage, stage 3A. Stage 3 also contains all the features of stage 2B along with respiratory failure and peritonitis. This indicates that the disease is progressing into severe condition and hence immediate attention is needed. Now if the disease still progresses, the gut is so much inflamed that the gut gives off and boom. Now the peritoneum is fully exposed by the gut content and hence develops the perforation of the gut which is seen as gas under the diaphragm. With this we complete the Bell's classification. You can review this again and again so that you develop an understanding towards this topic as how disease started in the lumen and slowly grows towards the mucosal wall and then spreads systematically. Now let's see how to manage this condition. Treatment of NEC If you observe from stage 1 to stage 3A the gut is still holding the content in it. And now here, if we provide supportive treatment or conservative treatment to kill the agent and to support the gut with IV fluids, nil per oral and IV antibiotics, then we can save the patient from developing further complications. But if the gut gets perforated as seen in the stage 3b, then we need urgent laparotomy. Now here we see that if the patient is unfit for the surgery, then we first do peritoneal lavage by flank drains. Now let's see the prophylaxis. The prophylaxis includes the breast milk and the probiotics as we have discussed in the first part of this video.